The Olympic Games are universal. In October, there was an elaborate ceremony near Mount Olympus in Greece where the Olympic flame was handed over to Chinese officials to begin the long voyage to Beijing. The ceremony was disrupted by Tibetan Canadian Chemi Lamo. We got stormed by, of course, the security officials. Uh, about eight or 12 just tackled us to the ground and made sure that we didn't get into the way of any cameras. Chemi Lamo and her friends were arrested and spent two days in jail, charged with destruction of an archeological site. Arriving back home, she received a hero's welcome from Toronto Tibetans. She says that her activism against the Chinese communist government really took off two years ago when she was elected president of the University of Toronto Scarborough campus student council. She received more than congratulatory messages. Along with that came thousands and thousands of threats, death threats, rape threats against me, my family members, simply because of my Tibetan identity. One guy actually wrote a rap about how he was going to rape me in Chinese or Mandarin and, and then said, oh wait, you wouldn't understand that, so let me send it to you in English and then translated it and sent it to me in English. One thing that gets me choked up, reading the message that said, your mom's dead. So I'd have to check in with my mom to make sure that she was safe. Once I said on my Instagram story, oh, is this hate from China as a joke when it first started? and someone messaged me and said, no, bitch, I'm here. Chemi Lamo identified the Chinese Students and Scholars Association at the University of Toronto as a source for her on-campus harassment. The organization is mainly composed of international students from mainland China under the leadership of the Chinese embassy. And so it was pretty obvious that I was being followed and watched and surveilled on campus, whether it was students or other people. Where do you think these messages were coming from? I think these messages were coming uh, uh, definitely from the Chinese embassy. There was another incident involving the Chinese Students and Scholars Association at McMaster University in Hamilton. When Uyghur Canadian Rukia Turdesh showed up to speak about the oppression of her people in China. She was abused and disrupted by pro-Beijing students who were apparently directed by the Chinese embassy. The CSSA was banned from further activity at McMaster. The Chinese Student Scholars Associations are reporting to the embassy what's going on on campus. Charles Burton was a Canadian diplomat in China and then a university professor in Canada. And if a Chinese student, you know, um, spoke out of turn or seemed to be affiliating with uh, um, other student groups that, that support human rights or, or, uh, or the rights of, of ethnic minorities in China, like Tibetans and Uyghurs, this could be potentially career destroying, would likely lead to some uh, degree of intimidation of their families back in China. And in general, um, you know, it keeps the students in line. China's intimidation of Chinese Canadians occasionally spills out into the streets. Free Hong Kong! Free China! In August of 2019, Canadians in support of Hong Kong democracy announced they would protest in several cities across the country on the same day. They encountered well-organized and well-funded counter-protests by pro-Beijing crowds. In Halifax, Toronto, and Vancouver, the pro-Beijing protesters carried the same printed posters, the same brand new China flags, and shouted the same slogans. The pro-democracy demonstrators tried to sing the Canadian national anthem, but were shouted down by the pro-Beijing group singing the Chinese anthem. The former head of the Canadian Security and Intelligence Service, Richard Fadden, has no doubt it was all organized by the Chinese government. I think the, the Chinese state has, has taken a fairly clear decision that these demonstrations affect its, uh, its honour and they need to be countered. 
So using their agents in Canada, they do just that. Uh, I think they have every consulate or em the embassy, I think, have lists of people who are willing to go out and, and, and do this kind of demonstration. In an especially ironic moment, the pro-Beijing crowd was led by a motorcade of expensive Ferrari and Lamborghini sports cars flying Chinese communist flags. They revved their engines to drown out the pro-democracy speakers, like Gloria Fung. Actually, this is about foreign force uh, intimidating us and also jeopardizing our Canadians' freedom of expression uh, on Canadian soil. These people with Ferraris are usually somehow or other connected to the senior levels of the Chinese Communist Party and, and I think the expectation is that they will uh, show their gratitude to the party by, by supporting the party's political ends. In Vancouver, the pro-Beijing protesters pushed things a bit further. They surrounded a Catholic church where the Hong Kong democracy supporters were having a prayer meeting. Ma'am, what's your name? Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, ma'am, I saw you yesterday. I am not going to answer I saw you yesterday at the transit station. Too. What are, what are you doing? I don't to answer any of your questions. Father Richard Sue was at the pro-democracy prayer meeting in the Vancouver church. They were trying to barge in to break up our prayer meeting. Uh, it got so bad that the neighbors of the church we were meeting in had to call the police. And even as we were leaving afterwards, uh, they were trying to take our pictures to harass us, to dox us. And they were trying to stop us praying, speaking and meeting in Canada, trying to stop us from living our Canadian values in our own country. Mr. Speaker, I believe if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent. Conservative Member of Parliament Michael Chong says that the federal government has to take action against China's diplomats in Canada. The Canadian government needs to haul the ambassador on the carpet and make it clear that that kind of interference in our society, in our universities, is unacceptable and that any diplomats are accredited uh, individuals that are involved with that will be de declared persona non grata and expelled from the country. Of course, the activities of the China Embassy and consulates are closely monitored by Canadian security services. But Canada's Global Affairs Department has traditionally taken the position that any expulsions of Chinese diplomats will only result in Canadian diplomats being kicked out of China. And so nothing happens. Terence McKenna, CBC News, Ottawa.